number nine. Now, in the diagram it says you've got a regular decagon. Now you can count the triangles if you like, but dec means ten. There are ten identical, ten congruent isosceles triangles making up this. There's an extra triangle sitting at the side, which is in line with the base of one of them. And the angle that it makes to the other corner of one of these is 17 degrees. You have to find the size of this shaded angle. Now, it's only for two marks. Well, rather than name angles via their vertices, I could just use letters. I'm going to call that angle X. That'll be the first thing to find out. If there's 10 of them sharing 360 degrees, then each of them will have 360 divided by 10, which will be 36 degrees. This angle is 36 degrees. Now, who can you get from there into this triangle? Because you need to know angles in this triangle. Well, if that's isosceles, then these two angles will be the same. I could call them Y. But, since this is a congruent triangle to that, these are also Y. And I can do a shortcut here. Y plus Y must be 180 minus X. This angle here will be 180 minus 2Y, which means this angle here is the same as angle X. Now you can work your way around to that if you like. I'll just mention it again. Since two lots of Y plus X makes 180, then two lots of Y plus X must also make 180. So I know that angle there is 36 degrees. So that I could get the angle I want, angle KJL will be 180 minus, if that's the same as X, that's 36 plus 17. That's 180 minus 40, 53, which is 100, number it's one less, and 27. Feeling that, you could work out all the bits and pieces. Start from your 36, you could take it from 180 and work out that individual one and then realise that that's the same as that, so you add them back up. And then knowing what those two come to, you could take it away from 180 to find this. But a wee bit of forward planning lets you get there straight away. Number 10. You're given this triangle, the lengths of two sides. Don't assume it's a right angle triangle and just think, oh, I'll get this side from Pythagoras. Unless you're told that's 90, you can't use 90. In any case, look at this. It tells you the cosine of that angle is an eighth. If that was 90 degrees, the cos of 90 is zero, so it's not right angled. Now, this is going to be one where you're going to be using the cosine rule. Yes, you'd expect that to be in paper two, but it can appear in paper one if it just tells you the nasty bits you'd have to use your calculator for, like finding the cosines or sines of angles. So you just look up the front, if you don't remember it, and write out the cosine rule. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. I'll just put that little inverted commas, because there's no a's or b's or c's there. That's just the form for it. That's the pattern you're going to use. That's the side I want. I might just call it x, y, in fact. b and c just means the two sides, which include the angle. So that's 10 and 8. 10 squared plus 8 squared. Two times, there they are again. Two times 10 times 8. Now, what's this cos of A? What's this angle? That would be the cos of Z. You don't know what Z is, but better than that, you know the cos of it's an eighth, so you just put in times an eighth. Now, let's just go through the arithmetic. 10 squared is 100. 8 squared is 64. Now, the eighth times the 8 cancels out, just leaving you with a 20. So that means you've got 164, take away 20, 144. What could be nicer than that? So finally, don't forget to do the square root. You've got the square root of 144, which is 12. X, Y is 12 centimetres. Number 11. Two marks. Express this fraction with a rational denominator. Give your answer in its simplest form. The problem here with the third is, it's not a rational number. The way to get rid of that is to multiply by itself. The square root times the square root will reconstitute the 6 and make the denominator rational. But it won't go away, because if you multiply the denominator, you'll also have to multiply the numerator to keep it balanced, to keep it the same. So now you've got this, you've got 9 root 6 
over 6. 9 and 6, I've got a common factor of 3. That's why it said simplify it. So 3 into 9 goes 3, and 3 into 6 goes 2. And even though root 6 looks as if it should simplify further, it doesn't. So number 12, just for one mark here, given that cos 60 is 0 0.5, state the value of cos 240. Well, you can probably guess it's either going to be 0 0.5 or negative 0 0.5. The way you'll check that is locate, think of the graph if you want, locate 240 degrees in your cast diagram, all sine tan cos. Remember that's measured from this positive axis anti-clockwise. So if you go down 240 degrees, that's 90, 180, that's 270. It's not as far as that, you'd end up here. If that's 240 degrees, you've gone beyond the 180 by 60. So the cos of 240, the operating angle is 60, is the same as cos 60, unsurprisingly. However, only the tangent's positive there. So when the cos ventures in, it'll be negative. So the answer must be the negative of this, negative 0 0.5.